Hey guys, I'm Alan, and I've spent the last two months of my life renovating this YouTube studio, but I think it's finally at a point where I can show you guys around and let you see everything. Now, this is going to be a very in-depth tour, so this might be kind of a longer video, but I just want to be sure I don't skip over anything, and I just want to go into detail on pretty much every single thing. So, let's go ahead and get started. Here's a quick overview of the room, and then we'll go around and take a closer look at every single detail. So this is the door that comes into the studio, and we have some closet doors right here. Now I did replace both of these doors, so those are new. The first thing I want to talk about is this little guy right here. This is a door stop called Jam, and uh, this door does not like to stay open, so whenever I open that door, if I want to keep it open, I just stick that little door stopper under there. Now let's go ahead and take a look inside the gear cabinet, or closet, I guess I should say. So every studio needs some storage. I don't have a ton of storage. The space is pretty well maxed out. Uh, let's take a look at the top up here. So up here I just have some uh, gig bags. Those are for guitars. Also this part may get a little bit dark, I apologize. The rest of the uh, studio tour should be good. And then we have uh, a bag here. This is just for my light that I use, the Aperture 300D. We'll talk about that more later. A couple hard shell guitar cases. We have a PS5 bag. And then these, are, this is a microphone case. This is a, a, a blue microphone, that's my wife. So I don't ever use that, uh, but we do have that case for it if we need it. Okay, then here's kind of where the gear that I use on a daily basis uh, starts. So in the corner over there, this is a Comica, like wireless lav mic set. I don't use that a whole lot. I've maybe used it two or three times. Um, I got it for free to review, but I don't want to get rid of it in case I ever do want to use it like for an interview or something so i just kind of keep it around <laughs> just in case uh, these are five fine mics i did reviews on both of these the k669c and the k669d i don't really need these anymore but they are pretty nice sounding budget mics so i will probably sell those just to put the money back into uh, this renovation and here we have a five fine just like a little four channel mixer i don't use that a whole lot but i do have it in case i ever need it here we have some Velcro cable straps. Those are always good to have, can't have too many of those around. Now this is where I keep all of my adapters. So I just have like phone clip, light adapters, like different thread adapters and stuff. You can never have too many adapters, you never know what you need. And then uh, here we have a couple of microphones. These are the SE Electronics SE7s. These are condenser mics. Just have a matched pair of those. I occasionally use those for overhead uh, miking. Also, I could use them for acoustic guitar if I wanted to. Back there, we have a uh, another like little cover for the Shure SM7B mic, which I haven't used, but I do have it. And then we have the MXL 990. This is a uh, large diaphragm condenser mic. That's it for the top shelf. It's probably the most exciting shelf. Uh, down here, I have a bunch of uh, cases. I have newer like LED panel lights and each one of them comes with a case. So I just have those cases in case I ever do want to like take them somewhere I can. And there's a, actually a couple of the smaller lights that are in those cases. Uh, up here we have some XLR cables. Whoops. <laughs> this is actually something I want to uh, change here in the next few weeks. I want to set up some hooks over here to hang all my cables on, my XLR cables. Uh, what else? <laughs> Instrument cables, headphone cables, anything I need. just want to kind of hang up over here to organize that. Then this is a sandbag so i can fill that with sand or whatever use that to like help weight down mic stands or light stands make stuff sturdier oh this is a uh, a wall mount for a camera that i haven't used but have it just in case i guess probably not going to use it <laughs> uh, this is a expression pedal for my korg keyboard so you can use that for doing swells down here there's not a lot of interesting stuff um, Camera bag, three hole punch, some canned air for dusting. This just has a bunch of like miscellaneous cables in it, uh, like phone chargers. Just if it's a cable, it's probably in there. <laughs> uh, here we just have some office organization. I won't go into that too much. We got paper, some crayons. Everybody needs crayons. Down here I have a bunch of uh, piano and guitar books, a few old laptop boxes. Pretty much does it for the cabinet. And then we have a wrapping paper, a little uh, holder here. There, there's just, we live in a small house, so there's nowhere else to put this stuff. So it's just in here, it's fine. 
Anyway, uh, here we have a Line 6 Helix backpack, so that just kind of stays in the closet. And then if I need to take it on the go, just put it in there. Over here we just have miscellaneous stands. I have, uh, let's see, a music stand, a couple of microphone stands. There's a guitar stand down in there. Uh, this right here is a ring light, which I occasionally use. Yeah, so that's pretty much going to do it for the gear closet. Let's go ahead and close that. And we will continue our tour. Up next, we have the piano recording area. Stand over here where you guys can see it a little bit better. So for this part, we have a couple of overhead soft boxes. These are newer LED 660 Pros. That's the panel light. And then I just have soft boxes over those with a honeycomb grid just to help diffuse the light, make it a little bit softer. You'll also notice we have outlets up here. So I had those installed. That was part of this renovation. That way I could plug those in up here without having to run wires up the wall or like inside the walls. Uh, this little guy right here, that's a overhead camera mount. So I just did that to the wall just to uh, basically avoid stands. I wanted everything to look clean and be set up kind of permanently where I don't have to move stuff around much. So yeah. Also these lights, they can be controlled by my phone. Let me show you real quick. So I can control the brightness of these for my phone. They also change colors, so I can pick different colors if I want to. Sorry, my hands are all sweaty. Yeah, they do all kinds of cool things. They have other effects and stuff. I don't want to uh, cause anyone to have a seizure, so I'm not going to show all the little effects that they do. But there you go. And then here we have some Kahaya acoustic panels. These just help deaden the sound. I made a review video on these. And these just stick right to the wall. They have adhesive on the back. And uh, yeah, they just stick there. Okay, next up we have a couple of wall-mounted music stands. These are made by Manhasset. So they actually don't go down to the ground. You'll notice they're mounted to the wall right there. And that just saves space again. I wanted to try to avoid having stands on the ground as much as I could. So yeah, that uh, basically <laughs> fixed that. It's also nice and long, so I can put sheet music on there. I can put my iPad up there, have a notebook. You know, I can put several things up there at once, just have plenty of space. Then we have the keyboard. This is the Korg SV1 88 key. It's kind of an older model, uh, but it still works really nice. It has MIDI and everything, so I mean, it works for what I use it for. I did not upgrade any instruments in uh, this renovation. That might be a next year thing, though. I may um, upgrade keyboard and also might upgrade my guitars as well. Then for the stand here, we just have an on-stage stand for the keyboard. Nothing too fancy. And then this piano bench right here, this is a Rockville piano bench. It's pretty comfortable. It's not the best. It's a little bit uh, too tall even on its lowest setting. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it works. Then right here, oh goodness, it's dark over here. This is a little Roland Cube monitor. So I just have that there, you know, if I just want to sit down and play piano and not have to worry about running headphones or recording anything, I just have that there. I can also use it as a monitor whenever I am recording to help sync up my audio and post. There we go. I think that's it for the piano area. Moving around over here, we have some artwork. This is like a Fender Telecaster patent. Found this on Amazon. I just thought it looked really cool. I have a... Uh, this light on right now, so it's casting a pretty big glare on it. But whenever that lights off, it has kind of a nice glow from the soft box over here. So anyway, I thought that was neat. And then up here, we actually have a green screen mounted to the ceiling. You'll notice I have this board right here mounted. So this wasn't going to fall on the studs. So basically, I mounted this board to the studs, and then I screwed these little eye hooks in there. I guess so. And yeah, so that's what that's hanging from. And then this just pulls down. So we can pull down right here. Stand back, let you take a look. There we go. One negative of this thing is it's 
I wish it was a little bit wider, um, but I think for the space, it's about as wide as I could go between the desk and the piano without like running into stuff. So yeah, but it works really well. I'm using that for thumbnail photos. I also used it for a reaction video that I just did where I reacted to why Steinway pianos are so expensive. Let's go ahead and put this back up. See how to put it up, you just pull down on it, it goes right back up. And again, I wanted something like that that didn't have a stand because I wanted to try to keep as many things off the floor as possible. Okay, then here we have some blackout curtains. And this is, a, you know, just a window back here. But, you know, like, the sun comes up right, like, facing this window. So, and I do a lot of my recording in the morning. So, without those, the, that sun just comes in here and it's just really, really harsh. Um, so, yeah, I just have those blackout curtains there to help kind of control the light. I can block out the uh, sun and basically control the light on my own. And then we have some new blinds that we put up. These are cordless blinds. Been really happy with those. Also, I should mention, like, as far as the renovation stuff that we did, this is new carpet. We repainted all the trim, put in new outlets there and on the ceiling, of course, and we repainted the ceiling, the walls, had these recessed lights installed, and also this light right here, which we'll check out here in a little while. Okay, I think that's it for this part of the room. Let's move over to kind of the top-down desk area. Again, starting with the top, we just have a couple more newer LED 660 Pro lights with those soft boxes. So the same lights I have over the piano. And then we have this right here. Again, that's another overhead mount. This one comes out a little bit farther just because the desk is wider than the piano. So in order to get it in the middle, it's kind of where it needed to be. Uh, more of those Kahaya acoustic panels, just kind of in a random design. I actually need to get a few more of those to put some over here and to put some on this wall. The acoustic guitar, we have the Gibson J165. Too dark in there for y'all to see. <laughs> but anyway, that is, yeah, it's a Gibson J165 acoustic. I've had for a long time. It's a nice guitar. Uh, I'm gonna keep this guitar, but I would like to uh, actually get a either a Taylor or a Martin. I haven't decided yet, um, but I do wanna get another acoustic guitar probably next year. It's 2023 when I'm recording this, so 2024. Now let's go over the desk setup. Starting over here, we have an iPad. This is nothing fancy. I don't even remember which generation it is, but uh, iPad Pro, it's like a 10 inch one. Uh, I use that for putting scripts on, guitar tabs, uh, chord charts, sheet music occasionally. It gets used all the time. Uh, we have a little plant back there, pencil holder. We have a coaster that looks like a poker chip. Actually, I'm gonna get a new coaster that looks like those like leather. I always hide this thing during videos. Um, but it'd be nice to have one I don't have to worry about that I like the way it looks. Okay, uh, then going over the rest of the desk, we have uh, iPhone 8 Pro, or iPhone 8 Plus. Nothing fancy, super old phone. Probably most of y'all watching this, your phone is newer than that. We have a uh, Apple Magic Mouse 2, I think it's called. Uh, that thing's really cool. The battery life on it is insane. Like, I only have to charge that thing like once every three or four months. It's pretty crazy. Uh, then we have a 2019 model MacBook Pro. This thing is a beast of a computer. It has 64 gigs of RAM, Core i9 processor, a terabyte SSD. Yeah, it's it's uh, crazy powerful. It will do 4K video. I don't have 4K um, cameras, <laughs> but when I do, it will edit those uh, pretty easily. Actually, it's kind of nuts. Um, I probably will upgrade this in the next year or two just to kind of sell this one while it still has some of its value left and I can upgrade uh, to something a little bit newer without just kind of losing all that value. There we go. Uh, this desk pad, we have an extended desk pad. Just found that on Amazon. Thought it looked really cool. It has like a uh, topographic kind of design. Then over here we have the main mic that I use that I like the most. This is the Shure SM7B. I'm sure you guys have heard of it or seen it. It's very popular on YouTube. And we just have a little boom mic stand that I'll set on my desk sometimes. We have the Scarlett 4i4. That's what I use for my audio interface. It has 
MIDI capability so I can run my keyboard into it or mics, instruments, pretty much anything. Over here, we have a couple of headphones. I made a video on these. These are the One Audio Monitor 60s, I think they're called. Uh, they're pretty nice sounding headphones, especially I got them for free. <laughs> so uh, they've been good for uh, not having to pay for them. And then on the back here, we have, I have to remember the brand name, Govi. This is a Govi LED light strip going across the back. I have a little cable clip here. Actually, I'm not done with all the cable management. I still have some of that left to do, but thought I would go ahead and get you guys started on the tour. We have a little chair here. Got this on Amazon. It's pretty comfy, looks cool. So as you can see down here, I haven't done all my cable management yet. Just have a power strip. I wanna mount a little rack underneath here to kind of put my power strip in and just run all the cables a little bit more tidily. Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I still have that to do. I wanna get another uh, MacBook Pro charger also. That way I don't have to kind of take my charger with me anytime I go to work. It'd be nice just to have one there set up all the time. All right, I think that is, well, wait, we need to cover the desk, I almost forgot. We can't talk about this top drawer that just has like business papers in it and stuff. So I won't open that, but let's open this bottom one because this is pretty sweet. This room's all about efficiency and fitting as much into a small space as possible. So down here I have a printer and that just kind of has a nice little hideaway spot. Now my dad built this desk for me. I did not build it. I don't know how to do that but I still do have to print off stuff from time to time. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier to edit and stuff. Um, so I have that printer there when I need it. Then this drawer right here, we just kind of have some random stuff, a little bit of everything. We have some guitar accessories, guitar picks, a snark tuner. I'll keep my capos in here. I think we've got, yeah, one capo there. Ebo, another tuner that's not a snark. This is a drone, little toy drone <laughs> remote that I don't even know where the drone is, but anyway, it's in there. <laughs> um, then here we just have a bunch of cables. Uh, we have some Sure in-ear monitors, headphone cables. I think there's some MIDI cables in there, headphone extensions. And then birthday cards. Everybody needs birthday cards. Then here's where I keep some of my camera gear. I'm, I have two of these. This is the Canon EOS M50. I have, and that's what I, you're seeing this on right now. That's what I'm recording with. Uh, I have two of those. So yeah, we have those, a bunch of batteries, a bunch of uh, SD cards, battery chargers. Got more battery chargers in here. Got a bunch of lens caps, uh, an old digital camera. So yeah, just kind of cameras and camera accessories in there. I have not upgraded my cameras yet. These cameras are relatively inexpensive. I think this was around $700 whenever I got them. And I'm pretty sure now you can get them for a little bit cheaper than that. But I do want to upgrade cameras later this year. Uh, we haven't yet just because, geez, cameras are so expensive. Um, the ones I'm looking at getting are the uh, Canon R6 Mark II because they'll do 4K, also continuous, uh, continuously. So you don't have to have like that 30 minute record limit. You can record for as long as you want to up to six hours, I believe. So there's been several times where 30 minutes has not been long enough and I've had to like stop the recording, restart. Uh, yeah, so again, just another time saver. And since they'll do 4K, we'll make that switch to 4K video. Uh, over here, I get a lot of compliments on this guitar. I've had it for a long time. Still love it. This thing sounds outstanding. Uh, this is a uh, Fender Telecaster, spalted maple, has two Seymour Duncan pickups also coil splitting so it's very versatile it's also really light it's a pretty uh thin guitar the frets need redone on it they are they are pretty rough just from playing it so much but yeah it's a great guitar sounds really nice they're kind of hard to find um but yeah they're cool guitars then down here we have a table this is a folding table so anytime i need to like film a review video or if I just want to do like a talking head video and I want to have a table there in front of me just I think it looks nice um, so I have that to use for those type of setups and then over here this is a new addition that I haven't really talked about yet this is the Aperture 300D light with a I believe that softbox is 35 inches it's huge 
Give you guys a better look at the light though back here. Yeah, so there it is, the Aperture 300D. This thing is huge. This is the Aperture Light Dome 2 softbox. It's a 35 inch softbox, so it's pretty massive, but it puts off a, a very nice, pleasant light. The, the bigger the uh, softbox, just like kind of the nicer the light's gonna look. So there you go. My camera's gonna not wanna focus on that light, but yeah, and this is uh, adjustable as well. So it comes with a remote that we can control the dimness on so we can turn it down or we can turn it up. This thing gets very bright. I've been using it on about 50 to 60% brightness most of the time, just because man, on 100% it is crazy bright. It will blind you. So yeah, there we go. There's that guy. Um, let's talk about that a little bit more. So down here we have the control box for that. And on here you can also control the brightness. There's a little ring there you can spin around that you can control the brightness on as well. Let's crank her down to 60. So yeah, anyway, it also has effects and stuff. Again, I won't turn on those effects. I don't want to affect any uh, photosensitive viewers, but it has like a built-in like flashing and uh, lightning TV screen effects uh, that are pretty cool. Okay, then down here we have some sandbags. Again, that just helps kind of weigh that stand down because this light is very heavy, like extremely. Um, it's really too heavy for this stand. So that is also another upgrade I'm gonna be making probably here in the next uh, few weeks, months maybe. Uh, I found a nice stand that's all metal, has wheels. And uh, originally I thought I might mount this light to the ceiling and I've very quickly changed my mind because there have already been several instances where I've needed to move this light either closer this way or, you know, I just, I just have needed to move it around. So I think mounting it's going to be a bad idea. So I'm just going to get a stand with wheels and then I can easily move it without having to pick it up because this thing weighs a lot, <laughs> a lot more than I thought it would. Um, also, just to talk budget for a minute. So brand new, this light and softbox is like, I think around $1,400. Uh, now, even though this is my dream studio, I still try to keep everything on a pretty tight budget. I didn't want to overspend on anything. So I actually got these used um, for, I believe it was like after tax, was like $1,200. So saved a couple hundred bucks that I was able to kind of use towards other uh, parts of this renovation. So yeah, used gear is a great way to go. These do not look used. They look brand new. So I like, there's no, no con to getting that used at all. Over here we have a couple of tripods. This is the Geekodo tripod with a fluid head. So sometimes I'll use that for panning shots in like product reviews and stuff. Uh, so it's adjustable, it also goes super tall, taller than me. Then we have a super cheap tripod. This is the Ravelli tripod. That thing's a piece of junk. I need to replace that with another one of these. I kind of want to have the one with the, um, you know, one with this fluid head on it. And then another one that has like a ball joint on it where I can tilt it to the side and film vertically whenever I need to. Then we have a Hercules music stand. It's just a music stand, but man, this thing is really cool, super sturdy. Sorry, my camera's not wanting to focus on it for some reason, but there we go. It's awesome. Like most Hercules products, it has the like quick adjust down there where you can adjust it really quickly with one hand. Then down here we have my dog. He's hanging out with us today. His name's Capo. He's super chill. You wanna say hi, bud? <laughs> yeah, you're so dark. We can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then right here we have the Line 6 Helix. I've been using this for a few months now. This thing is a super powerful tool. Pretty insane all the stuff you can do with it. I don't own an amp anymore or any other pedals. This is now the main thing that I'm using. I just kind of went all in. Again, I got this used. Knew these things are like... I don't know, maybe anywhere between 1500 to 1700 I paid 1200 for this um, and traded in some other stuff. So yeah, I got a, got a good deal on it. And uh, just finished my first patch. I just, um, a few weeks ago, released a patch for Sunday is Coming by Phil Wickham. And I'll be releasing a lot more patches as I kind of dive into that. I'm just kind of just now learning how to use the thing after a few months. So loving that, it's been an awesome change. A Couple more things to go over. We have another uh, guitar hanger here, another outlet up here in case I did want to mount this to the ceiling, but again, 
Like I said, I don't think I'm going to. But good to have that out with there if I ever need it. And then over here, we just have a little uh, remote holder. This is made by Total Mount. I keep my aperture remote in there. That's uh, the slide over here. And then I also have this slide. This remote. And that controls this light here in the middle that we can turn on and off. So we can turn it on and off from here. We can also adjust our color temperature. All that good stuff. It's RGB, so we can change the colors of it. Pretty nifty little light. And again, the remote just goes right in there. I kind of need to move that other one out of the way. <laughs> and then we just have our uh, two little switches here. And our can lights are on dimmers. You guys see those? There we go. Now let's briefly talk about things I want to do or still have to do, but haven't done yet. Um, so there's a few, I guess, pretty major things <laughs> uh, missing. Uh, one of them is, you'll notice I don't have any monitors over here for audio, so I don't have any studio monitors. Um, so that's going to be something I still need to add. I mean, I mean, you can't have a studio without studio monitors. Come on. <laughs> so I'm looking at the Yamaha HS8s, and that's the reason I haven't got them yet, just because they're pretty expensive. Um, yeah, I want to mount those to the wall, like one here, one here. So that's another thing I want to do. Like I said, the stand for the light, still have that to do. Uh, I want to do some cable management under there just to clean that area up. And then lastly, we just need to upgrade the cameras. That's a big one. Uh, that's probably the biggest part of this renovation is the cameras, which I haven't done yet. And then just some cable, uh, places to hang cables up in the closet. Uh, one other, yeah, one other thing, I wanted to get some bigger monitors for my cameras. As you guys will see, like uh, monitors for video. So the screens on these Canon cameras are like three inches. <laughs> and I feel like whenever I first got these, I could see myself pretty well. I could see most of the details on those little screens. I guess my vision is not as good anymore <laughs> because now like I cannot tell when this is in focus, uh, at least whenever I'm like standing at any distance from it. Um, so yeah, I just really need to get some bigger monitors to hook these up to. They make ones you can like mount on the top of the camera. This will be for the new cameras obviously, but yeah, they make ones you can mount to the top that are bigger. So I may go with something like that. They're like seven inches. So that would probably work. Or I could just get some like like screens and just mount them to the wall and just wire them up to these. So that's another thing I need to do because there have been several times over the past few months where there's been an issue with like focus or uh, maybe the camera angle wasn't quite like I wanted. And it's just because I can't see well enough on those tiny screens. Uh, so I really need to make that change and that'll alleviate some issues uh, in editing. I think that's going to wrap it up for today's tour video. If there's anything that I missed or something you want to know more about, please let me know down in the comments. Like, also let me know, like, if you have your own studio, is there something that I'm missing that uh, could just make my life a lot easier? Please let me know that. Also, if you guys want to know about, like, the cost or those sorts of things, I'd be happy to make some follow-up videos. So just please comment down below. I'll try to uh, get some ideas of, of possibly future follow-up videos on this. And I'll also make videos about those few updates that I have. And then I also, on my second channel, I am going to be posting, some of them will already be out by this time, but just like videos of this entire process, like how I kind of did everything and uh, just each step of it, I made videos about that on my second channel. So be sure to go check those out. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. See you guys in the next one.